look at somebody and tell them it's going to be a Psalms 23 kind of year. I told you the second Sunday is going to be a Mark 11, 23 kind of year. That you're not just going to have faith in God, you're going to have the faith. And if you believe those things that you say, you shall have whatsoever you say. I dare you to open your mouth and start decreeing and declaring over your life. I'm above and not beneath. I'm the head and not the tail. My downsetting is blessed. My uprising is blessed. I'm blessed in the city. And I'm blessed in the field. Look at somebody tell me this is Mark 11, 23 kind of year. Come on, look at him tell him you got to have faith in God's person. You got to know who he is. You got to know who he is. You got to know who he is. He's wonderful. He's my counselor. He's my prince of peace. My everlasting father. He is my kingsman redeemer. What's his name? Can y'all hear me? I said, what's his name? I said, what's his name? See, you got to have faith in his person, but then you also got to have faith in his promises. Look at somebody and tell me every promise that God has made to me, he's faithful to perform it. Come on, look at, I said, stay hot. Look at somebody and tell me every promise that God has made to me. He's faithful to perform it. Look at somebody tell me, he promised that I shall live and not die. He promised that if I serve him, he'll take care of me. He promised to make my enemies my footstool. He promised. Look at somebody and tell them it's a Mark 11, 23 kind of year. Now it says you got to have faith in God's person. You got to have faith in God's promises. But look at somebody telling you, you better have faith in God's plan. See, because watch this here. The Bible says that it's the plans of the Lord that shall not fail. And I'm going to tell you something. I got one more point. I'm going to my seat. I told you now that I'm a little older, I'm a, I'm a lot wiser. I'm, I'm almost done here. Watch this here. When you have faith in God, you have faith in God's promises. You have faith in God's person. You have faith in God's plan. Now hear me good. God's got a plan for every area of your life. Look at somebody and tell them his plans for me are going to prevail. He says, I know the plans that I have towards you. Plans of good and not evil to give you a successful future. Look at somebody and tell them, don't let the devil fool you. Tell them God's got plans for you. Can I give you one more? Can I give you one more? And then I feel a hey, hey in my feet. Not only is it going to be a Psalms 23 kind of year, not only is it going to be a Mark 11, 23 kind of year, it's also going to be a Proverbs 23 kind of year. Now, I want you to understand something about Proverbs, and this is good. I want you to grab this here. Once they say, I worked on this just for you. All right, Proverbs 23, it talks about having a brand new perspective. See, what good is a new year if it's not a new you? All right, look at somebody and tell them, Happy New You. Come on, tell them, Happy New You. Come on, one more time, say, Happy New You. See, some, some folk, they're going to repeat 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, and 22. They're going to repeat it all over again because the calendar is going to change, but they're not going to change. And the Bible says, be ye transformed. Y'all stay hot. Look at somebody and tell them, be ye transformed. Now, now here, here's the deal. You can't put new wine in the old wine skins. Why? Because the new wine will cause the old wine skins to burst. And the reason why some of us can't grab it because we can't handle new concepts. We can't handle new ideas. Come on, look at somebody and tell them God wants to renew your mind. 
So whenever you start dealing with Proverbs, Proverbs, and I challenge you to do what I do every day, I read from the book of Proverbs. Every day I read from the Gospels. Every day I try to make it my business to read from the book of Acts. Every day. That's just what I do. All right? So uh, Proverbs 23, it gives a new perspective. Watch this here. Concerning your food. Uh oh, I know I just hit a bad note right there. See, the first thing God did when he brought Israel out of Egypt was alter their diet. See, and a whole lot of us, we saying, God, do this for me, do that for me. But God can't really adjust your diet. They were so attached to their food that they would rather go back and be slaves. Oh, my God. They were standing right there. And they said, Pastor Moses, it would have been better for us to be slaves down in Egypt. At least we would have had chitlins and fried chicken and pound cake. Y'all ain't talking back to me. At least we would have had all we wanted to eat. We would have ate from the buffet as much as we want. It'd be better for us to be slaves. Look at somebody and tell them, get government over your food. Come on, so, so, so this is what he says in Proverbs 23, verses 1 through 3. While dining with the ruler, pay attention to what is put before you to eat. If you are a big eater, put a knife to your throat. Don't desire all the delicacies, for he might be trying to trick you. I, I ain't getting no help right there. You, you know, somebody called me up a couple of weeks ago and uh, said, Bishop, I want to talk to you about an investment. I said, all right, what are you talking about? They said it's going to be at least a $50,000 investment. Y'all be seated. We'll be back up in a second. They said it's going to be about a $50,000 investment. I said, 50000 They said, yeah. I said, all right, where do you want to meet at? They said, let's meet at Cracker Barrel. I told my wife right now, I'm going to enjoy these pecan pancakes, but I'm not giving up fifty grand and meeting somebody at Cracker Barrel. Then when I got to Cracker Barrel, the bill came and they had alligator arms. How in the ham and cheese do you invite me to your investment meeting and want me to pay the bill at? Oh, my God. And, and then they just about ordered everything on the menu except please thank you and come again. They just are eating and are eating and are eating and are eating. And I text my wife and I said, baby, you can put up the checkbook because I'm not investing nothing they got going on because they don't have any management over their food. Oh, my God. Look at somebody telling them, watch how much you eat this year. Watch this here. So you got to govern your food, govern your food. Come on now. It's going to be a Proverbs 23 kind of year. You got to govern your food. Here's another one here. Watch this here. It's going to be a year to where you're going to have to understand your fortune. Oh, my God. Watch, watch this here. Watch what he says in 23, verse 4 and 5. Don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Right, right. Ain't nobody dancing on this one here. Don't, don't wear yourself out trying to get this Proverbs chapter number 23, verse number 4 in the New Living Translation. All righty. Don't, come on, say it with me. Wear yourself out trying to get rich. See, you, you know, when I rehearsed this in my pickup truck earlier this week, I had a bigger old man that wasn't nobody in there but me. I said, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. Verse number five says, be wise enough to know when to quit. Oh, my God. Look at somebody telling you, you got to know when enough is enough. I ain't getting no help. See, I ain't getting no help. See, because I know you want more, 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 more. And truth be told, you'll get so much that you'll never enjoy what you got. You always on the grind. You never take a vacation. I ain't getting no help. Y'all looking at me sideways. Look at somebody and tell them, don't wear yourself out chasing a fortune. No, know when you got enough. I was on my way to the store the other day. I pulled into the parking lot. I said, I'm going to go in here and grab me a sweatsuit. And then I said, mm-mm, you got sweatsuits at the house you don't even wear. Pulled right on out the parking lot and brought my handsome self right on back to the house. 
I said, you, you got stuff you, you don't even wear. Uh, wife and I went to dinner last night. We sat there now, and I don't know, maybe it's an age thing. We share entrees. Well, what you going to get? All right, we can split this together. Now, we can afford everything on the menu, but you done got to a place now to where you govern your food, and then you understand your fortune. Now, here's what the Bible says. The Bible says, if you live right, watch this here, prosperity shall rush on, rest on you like dust. Oh, my God. Look at somebody and tell them, don't wear yourself out trying to get rich. All right, here's another one right here. It talks about in verse number six through nine, not only should you govern your food, not only should you watch your fortune, but be careful who you fellowship with. I thought somebody was going to get up and run on that one there. Watch who you fellowship with. I had a guy ask me the other day when, when we were in church, we went to hear the great uh, Bishop Paul Morton, and the preacher came up to me. He said, hey, man, uh, I know you're a businessman, and I watch you, and, and, you, and you're successful in ministry. What can I do to be a better businessman and to be more successful in ministry? I said, well, when it comes to be successful in business, hang around business-minded people. Get away from people with your problem and circle yourself around people who have your solution. I said, now, uh, when it comes to being a better preacher, I said, listen to better preachers. I said, because who you circle yourself around will determine who you become. And he said, I was surprised to see you here tonight. I said, why are you surprised to see me here? Do you not understand the legacy of Bishop Paul Morton? My goodness, I would have walked over here to hear him preach. I said, center yourself around good people who are better than you. And I said, well, let me practice on him. I said, I'm looking at you. Make sure you watch your food, too. You understand me? Stop eating everything they put before you. It'll make a difference in your life, and you'll start seeing your fortune build up. Look at somebody and tell them it's a Proverbs 23 kind of year. Now, watch what he says here. This, this is what he says here in Proverbs 23, verse number 6. Don't eat with people. I'm going to see, can you help me praise them here? Don't eat with people who are stingy. No, no, you want your 2023 to be better. Don't eat with people who are stingy. It's in the Bible. You ain't got to like it, but I'm going to preach it. Watch this here. Don't desire their delicacies. They are always thinking about how much it costs. Oh, my God, you go to dinner with stingy people, they order from the right to the left, and you trying to order from the left to the right. They look at the prices and determine what they want. Look at somebody and tell them, I ain't eating with your stingy behind no more. Come on, go find them. Tell them, I'm not eating with your stingy tail no more. I can't enjoy a good meal because you order from the right to the left, and the Bible says... Don't eat with stingy people. Don't travel with stingy people. Don't go shopping with stingy people. Don't tell stingy people your secrets and your priorities and your desires. Open your mouth and say, I'm cutting stingy folk loose. All right, look at the latter part of this. Are you getting something out of this? Don't waste your breath on fools. Uh, I can just lay the mic down and go into the house right now. I I'm talking about a Proverbs 23 kind of year. Stop arguing with people who are determined they ain't going to never be wrong about nothing. said stop arguing with people who don't never want to be wrong about nothing stressing yourself out they make you cuss oh you know fools will make you cuss oh no 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 the cuss will just come up when you start dealing with fools I'm telling you now he said watch your food watch your fellowship See, you sitting there just arguing stuff, and then you wonder why your head hurting. 
Man, my head hurting so bad. I don't know why my head hurt. Every time I finish talking to you, it just wears me out. I, I, I'm serious. It just, just don't make no sense. I, I, I said to somebody the other day, I said, do you not understand stuff will stress you out? Stress brings sickness. Sickness brings death. I don't let nothing stress me out. I, I'm telling you right now, I don't let nothing stress you just all worried about stuff and you're feeling it all in your chest and then your eyes bothering you and stuff you stressed and you know why you're stressed because you're dealing with fools no matter how much you try to tell them it's just gonna be what they think right, right here i'm in the bible ain't no need of you looking at me like i made this up it's in the word of god don't waste your breath on fools. Here's the reason why. For they will only despise the wisest advice. No matter what you tell them. Look at somebody and tell them, I'm not wasting my breath this year. I, I, I'm not wasting my breath. You know, sometimes you're like, I feel like I just need to say something to them. I just, I, I just feel like I just need to give them some advice. I just, I, I just feel you're casting your pearls before swine. Look at somebody tell them, stop wasting your breath. Can, can, can I go a little bit further? Watch this here. Uh, by the time you drop down to verse number 10, it shows you three important matters in your life. Are you getting something out of this? Watch this here. Matter number one, somebody say integrity. See, you're going to do good business this year. I feel that in the Holy Ghost. You're going to do some big business this year. Oh, you ought to be laying your hands on the altar. I'm talking about multi-million dollar deals, you, billion dollar deals. You're going to be doing big business this year. Somebody say big business, big business. I'm, I'm talking about major, major business. And, and, and because you understand the fortune to when you know when you got enough. You, you understand where I'm coming from? You're going to be doing major business deals this year and, and this is what he talks about here he says don't cheat your neighbor by moving the scales of the boundary lines right there in verse number 10 so so why are you asking God to increase you ask God to increase your integrity I, I, I need some integrity you 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 know when you got what you want from the deal don't get so greedy that you say, I'm, I'm going to squeeze all the blood out of this turnip here. I, I'm going to try to get, even if I got to falsify and start moving the boundary line. Come on, somebody. Ain't nobody dancing on this one here, Pastor. Here. He says, watch this here. Don't cheat your neighbor by moving the boundary markers. And don't take advantage of the defenseless one. Folk who are not smart enough to figure it out. Don't do that to them. Here, here, here's another one. Here's another one. We're going to dance in a minute here. He says, not only your integrity, but in Proverbs 23 kind of year, says not only will you have integrity, but you're going to be subject to follow instructions. Mm, Mother Claire, ain't nobody helping me on this one here. He says, commit yourself to instructions. Listen carefully to words of knowledge. See, I wrote something the other day that says, Lord, help us to increase in our area of expertise. Help us to increase in wisdom and knowledge. Lay your hands on your head and say, I'm going to increase in knowledge this year. See, watch this here. And in order to increase in knowledge, see, a whole lot of y'all, you're on social uh, media and you're scrolling and everything that looks entertaining to you, you're drawn to it. But when something looks educational, you scroll by it. And you have to understand, watch this here, want don't bring wealth. Wisdom brings wealth. See, ain't nobody coming down here now. You know, and I'm going to tell you right now, my ministry is not just contoured for broke folk. 
I ain't getting no help. No, no, I got a millionaire. I got a millionaire message right here. They're going to fly me all over the country to talk to people that don't look nothing like you about this stuff right here. Look at somebody and tell them, follow instructions of the wise. You want your marriage to work out? Follow some instructions. Oh, my God. You want your business to work out? Follow some instructions. After you finish getting excited, look at somebody and tell them, set your hips down and get some instructions. See, because I'm prophesying right now. I'm prophesying right now. I don't know who it is, but I'm telling you right now, within the next three months, you're about to come into some supernatural wealth. Whew. Some supernatural wealth. And, and somebody say, how he know that? I'm going to tell you how, how I know, because God gave me something in my spirit. And I said, God, how you going to finance this vision for the ministry? He said, just like I did in Exodus 25, I'm going to bless my people and let my people bless the ministry. He said, so when you stand up, according to Mark 11, 23, speak it over the people so that I can perform it in their lives. And as I perform it in their lives, they'll obey the scripture. I'm telling you right now, you say what you want to say. I was hoping somebody in this church, I'm not endorsing you go play the lottery, but I was hoping that somebody in this church hit that lottery. Now, I'm wise enough to know. I'm wise enough to know, and I'm going to leave that right there. But I wasn't hoping all of y'all hit it. I, 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 I got my lottery hit list right up here, and, and some of your names ain't on it uh -huh, because you're stingy now. That's why we don't go eat together. Uh -huh. You're always trying to order everything. That's why we don't go fool and have food together. Uh -uh. No, 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 no. no. I, I'm praying. That as you step into this level of increase, that you can follow some instructions. I looked at Deacon Cookie the other day while we were having the meeting. And I said, you know what? You can be trusted with that level of wealth. And she said, yes, Bishop. I said, no, no, I'm, I'm serious. You, you can be trusted with, with, with that level of wealth. Uh -huh. I, I looked at some of the other ones. I said, you can be trusted with that level of wealth. And somebody say, how can you say? I was telling my wife the other day. We were driving down the street. I said, Cookie can be trusted with it. I said, Portia can be trusted with it. Don't you get mad if I don't call your name. It don't mean you ain't on my list. You understand where I'm coming from? And she said, what about so-and-so? I said, mm-mm, put a big, big, big mark through her name because she don't give tithe on the little bit. So, and the bank says he that is faithful in the little shall be faithful in the much so if you ain't giving where you are now you ain't gonna give nothing th I ain't getting no help if you hitting and missing now God knows you're gonna hit and miss then why because you don't have enough mental fortification to sit your blessed assurance down and receive some instructions can, can I tell you another thing watch this here watch this here Look at verse num number 13. Don't fail to discipline your children. The rod of punishment won't kill them. Physical discipline may well save them from death. Now, now, now you know, when, when I read that, Pastor, I said, Lord, you started out talking about integrity, and then you jumped into some instructions, and now we're looking at correction. And the Holy Ghost spoke to me and said, this ain't just for toddlers and little children, except you be converted and become as a child. Look at somebody telling me, he's talking about us grown children. And he says, I got to correct you because correction is about making short-term adjustments for long-term improvement. If you can't take corrections now, you can't improve your life late. Y'all going to have to help me. I'm done now. Look at somebody and tell me, you better take the correction now. Because if you take the correction now, it's going to make your life better down the road. I dare you to look at somebody and tell them it's going to be a Proverbs 23 kind of year. Then he goes on to tell them, I'm going to give you a reason to rejoice. Look at your neighbor and see neighbor. Tell them God is about to give you a reason to rejoice. I thought y'all like good preaching. Why y'all not helping me? I need you to look at somebody and say, oh, neighbor. 
said the Lord that we serve is about to give you a reason to rejoice he says in verse number 15 of Proverbs 23 one reason to rejoice is because of your righteous living look at your neighbor and say neighbor he says in the word my child if your heart is wise he says I will rejoice I dare you to grab somebody by the hand and tell that neighbor these words tell them you gotta rejoice over your righteous living he says not only that but rejoice when you reverence God he says that in verse 17 through 19 he says but rejoice when you reject the wrong crowd to hang around verses 20 through 21 but I like what he says in verse 26 I'm sorry in Proverbs 23 and 6 he says my son when I read that I got excited because in order for him to call you his son means that there has to be a level of closeness I dare you to look at somebody real good real good and tell me you better walk close to God in this season he says my son he says give me thine heart giving God your heart simply means I'm gonna live a life of commitment he says but not only only that he says let your eyes observe my ways what he's simply saying is you gotta walk close to me you gotta be committed to me and you gotta totally comply to me I dare you to look at your neighbor and say neighbor it's gonna be a Psalm 23 kind of year it's gonna be a Mark 11 23 kind of year it's going to be a Proverbs 23 kind of year. And tell them, and that alone is the reason I will rejoice. Is there anybody in here this morning that will jump on your feet and say, Lord, I just want to say thank you for protecting my ear. Say, Lord, I just want to say thank you for going before me and giving me wisdom. I dare you to open your mouth, throw back your head, and give God glory. Give him a glory that simply said, you are by my side. Give him glory that simply said, you're increasing my faith. Give him glory that will solidify your wealth and wisdom. Open your mouth and say, yes, yes. High five your neighbor and tell your neighbor it's going to be that kind of year. Come on, tell them it's going to be that kind of year. It's going to be that kind of year. If you believe it, say, yes. Oh, slip those hands up. Let's honor God in worship by not just giving him our lives, but also by making a sacrifice. I beseech you, therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living, holy, and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be ye by the renewing of your. Just look at somebody and tell them there's a new you. There's a new you. There's a new you. There's a new you. Hear me as a prophet, I'm done in the next four minutes. This year will be a year that you will look back and know that God, everything I needed was in your word. I'm going to take his word and apply it to my life. I know many of you all, you know, you hear me say this, and, and I don't say this to be, you know, whatever you want to call it, but everything God has given me is because I trust his word. Everything that God allows me to rejoice because I trust his word. You can have the person of Christ and not prosper. But you can't, watch this now, practice the principles of Christ and not.
not prosper. And while many of us have the person of Christ, we don't practice these principles. I'm praying right now that God will cause you to govern your food. Understand your fortune and watch your fellowship. I'm praying right now that as you walk with God, you understand that he's your father. You're his son. You're his daughter. That talks about a conversion life, a converted life. That talks about a close walk with him. I, I, I'm praying right now that as God gives you instructions, you totally comply to them. In the name of Jesus. And Father, I thank you right now for resting on your people. Slip those hands up for resting in the hearts of your people. In the name of Jesus. And for this we say thank you. Can I challenge you today to go home and study out Proverbs 23? Study it out back and forth. As you get down towards that latter part of Proverbs 23, it talks about your sobriety. Oh, yes, it does. It talks about your sobriety. sobriety. It talks about how overindulging cause you to become unstable. It talks about how overindulging. You, you read it there. It talks about your sobriety. Cause you to make bad decisions. And then you come back and say, God fixed them when you shunned away from the wisdom that he was giving you in his word. You know what the Bible says? If you laugh and turn your nose up and your head away from wisdom in your day of calamity, he'll laugh at you. We ought to seek God's word to practice the principles. I just want you to do me a favor. Just touch three people on the shoulder and tell them this is going to be a Proverbs 23 kind of year. In Jesus' name. 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 For this we say thank you. For this we say thank you.